Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Today we are going to be demoing a deck for you, maybe a consideration that you might want to take to the historic qualifier play in this weekend and best of one. So this is an Amalia combo deck. Yes, Pioneer and Explorer Amalia has been ported over to Historic. I got a lot of tools with Modern Horizon that actually make it quite reasonable. Uh, this deck list I took from Magic Christian 3 on Twitter. Uh, they went uh, 16 and 4 in metagame challenges with a best of 3 variant of this deck. Uh, we're playing it in best of 1, given that the tournament is best of 1 for the qualifier plan. Uh, the only changes I made to their list was I got rid of the 2 Fatal Push main, just went more in on the combo, another Prosperous Innkeeper, another Ocelot's Pride. I could see this even being potentially a Soul Warden effect, uh, but there's a couple different lines with the deck that we can win with so not the nice thing we can play a Luris companion there's no aetherflux reservoir in this particular list um but you have the core amalia wild growth walker any way to gain life basically one-sided board wipe court of calling and collect a company help you find and assemble your pieces you have the instant will win combo with dina for the most part where you can just um deal damage for each life loss you can rebuy combo pieces with return to the rank uh, Prosperous Innkeeper is a life gainer. Guide of Souls, a new card that's a life gainer. Also gives evasion, which is nice. So with Amalia, based on your sequencing, you might need to give a flying. That could work. Halfling as ramp. Also, it's pride gives you kind of a fair game plan as well. So you can just go like the Amalia little shitters beater. Uh, you also have Soren House of Markov. So a couple things with Soren. Uh, you can play it after Amalia combos if you have, say, four mana. Uh, it can't be played when Amalia's comboing because this is post-combat main. You're able to flip it, you're able to just shoot something down. But notably, Soren has Extort, which allows you to start the combo with the life gain. Uh, so if you have both Amalia and Wild Growth Walker out, you can use Soren to trigger to get the combo going. Uh, and then it's minus. The plus even is just relevant with Gilded Goose, make you some food, gain you some life as well, uh, which is kind of cool. So... Uh, the rest of the deck, kind of stock, Sonote Scout can trigger the combo. It's just a lot of ways to trigger the combo and resiliency in finding the combo. So what we're going to do is I'm going to demo a couple games of the deck. At the end, I will do a wrap-up, so kind of say all the stats that we played. For context, with the Fatal Push version, I'm 2-0 thus far, um, just kind of getting a feel for the deck. Uh, but we'll stay tuned to the end, and we'll give kind of a synopsis on what I think of the deck into a heavily Boros uh, energy metagame. So we'll catch you uh, throughout the games and at the end for the wrap-up. Alrighty, first game up. Playing a plat one player. So we have combo elements. We could lead on oscillates. We have cord and collected company, which could work out nicely. So I think we do keep. So this could be the shifting woodlands combo deck. Could be Yogg. Um, so I'm actually going to lead planes here. Actually, no, I made that mistake. I should have gone Delighted Halfling with the Mana Confluence because I want to play both next turn. So, bit of a mistake there. Assemble the team. It's likely a combo deck. This could also be the Ula, surprise Ulamog deck. So that's something we should be considering uh, as we're playing the games. So they have the sack available here. Opponents on a bit of a unique build. We'll see what they're comboing into. Uh, usually, assemble the teams not played for fair value. <clears throat> so we'll see what they kind of come up with. I apologize for my voice. I'm dealing with allergies. Bladunking. Some sort of scape shift combo. Oh, this is um you scape shift into all the the temples and then you cheat in the Eldrazi. So it's a combo deck. So 
So we'll do this. Hold up Coco for their turn, because if they try to combo, we could potentially wipe their board as well. Set a, a stop on their end step. <clears throat> okay, so they have the one ring. Let's do this. So I actually think here so I could go for the combo, but I think we just go value here. I did this just in case we found Dina. I think we keep oscillates on top. It gives us a wider board. Now, notably, I have I have sufficient green sources, so I can shock this in. Green, green, green. Fine, doesn't make much difference. And then if they do combo, we can just I think we still put this into the graveyard, just kind of set up our turn. Got a bunch of Amalia triggers here. Just as a backup plan. Let's see what they do here. They assemble. Very curious. They likely have a sweeper, but the sweeper would have to hit Amalia as well. This looks like the scape shift turn. Yep. Oh, so they use World Tree. So what they'll do is get everything into play. They use World Tree, get a bunch of Eldrazi out. Or not Eldrazi, of gods. Oh, they don't. That's kind of cool. How do you win, though? Okay, so you have no lines in play. Oh, probably Splendid Reclamation. Beseech. I mean, at the very least, we're going to include this in the video because it seems like a cool kind of combo deck. Splendid Reclamation. Get back splendid. Oh, they might have fireball here. Like, um, Bane Fire. They keep looping it. We might be able to just out. Pace them in terms of life gain. So we'll see what they kind of do here. Ladunking.
Assemble the team. So they'll basically have every land in their deck now in play, for the most part. So they beseech here. The trigger. See if they so they sack the peatland. They'll probably reclamation again. Let's see what they tutor. Masterminds acquisition. Okay, so this might just be reservoir. So they could just keep looping here, as I guess the combo. see because we still have like the extort that might get them this is a weird game Getting both, they could draw it with one ring. Draw with the land. Seems easier to just bane fire, like than going through this aether flux loop. There's just a chance that they mess up. Because we have the combo. So. A two. Green, green, green. Could have calling ritual, so we probably lose, but. Go for the combo here. And if we could find a lot of lands, it might just be able to gain us enough life, but they, they've demonstrated enough of a loop that they can probably do it twice. Because Amalia already had quite a few counters on her. So, gonna be able to get us here. Just 
just outpaced us. Interesting deck. The one ring turn kind of messed us up because we were able to kind of kill them that turn, but it obviously didn't work because of the protection. If we had hit Dina, we would have won. They've demonstrated the loop, so they got us on that one. Interesting deck. So we'll conclude this in the video. It was a loss, but we kind of showed what the combo of our deck can do. Uh, they just comboed out harder than us. We'll catch for the next game. Alrighty, jumping into a game. We go first. No companion shown. Kind of awkward hand. I think we mulligan. Okay, sounds much better. We can go Goose into these two, into a Collected Company. Uh, we'll put back a Goose here. So kind of a fairer version right now. No combo, well, one of the three combo pieces, but none of the two necessary ones. This is just a way, but we can go fair game plan. It's one of the elements I like about the deck. You do have a fair plan. In addition to, so this is Wizards. Could be Jeskai Control, but I would assume Wizards first. Okay, so Tamiyo could potentially flip if they have Is It Charm. Otherwise, it's usually the Flame of Anor turn that gets us. Reason to block. And the off chance they play Monstrous Rage. It's pretty bad. Okay, so this is Jeskai Control. So we do need to be mindful of a Sweeper next turn. This might be... Really needed a Lion there. So... In the event they have Divine Purge, I'm probably losing anyways. I can keep my treasure around. Unfortunately, don't have enough to flip Soren. I could Amalia. Just try to find some line drops. Get rid of Halfling. I'm just trying to set up. Um. Ah, I could have done Soren. I forgot I had the energy. Okay, so Soren probably was the line. I think we need to hit Lions here, because if they have a sweeper, it's really bad. Jeez. Okay, well, we probably lost this. We're just not seeing Lions. So they could flip the Tamio here. Mind you, it resets them off the Vine Purge. Could have Flame of Anor. So I made a little bit of a mistake. Brotherhood's in. That's fine. Thank you. Okay, so we are open to getting hit by Flame of Anor. So the Soren line, in retrospect, probably doesn't do anything. So I could Amalia and just gain, like, stupid amounts of life, but I think we just attack and Luris here. Okay, 
They could plage. But they need a card, two cards in the yard, actually. So they might have Supreme Verdict. A land just lets us cord into the combo. Actually, no, we need two lands. Tamio, Flame of Anor would probably be the worst tier because it flips Tamio as well. Fling doesn't do much. Kind of absurd. We went 16 cards deep and we didn't find a land. So I could convoke a guide of souls out. I didn't gain life. They have Brotherhood and it's bad. They don't have, they could get Flage back. Oh no, wait. This can do two mana. So I could get back the Prosperous Innkeeper. Just gives me a mana here. Veto's fine. Because this turn's likely Flage coming back hitting. This game's like totally different if we draw one more land. Because they hit half blink here. Really need to be able to. Promise they likely have dispute. It's like the worst draw. That's super, super frustrating. Can't do anything. No sense of playing Laris out here. Just dies. Just have to try to go for Coco. And also just not having the green that I can cord into something also feels bad. Like these games have all been like there for us to win. We just haven't like we've slipped up in one spot where it's you'd think 16 cards you'd hit your fourth land because 17 cards to hit our fourth land with double cocoa in hand. We also like Amaliad for a whole bunch. Which also didn't help. That's an interesting line. Doing that over just getting rid of Removal here. It's frustrating. I think we Coco on their end step. Frustrating game. The answer pretty much every spot. If this is protection, they get us. 
or they probably have like veto or make disappear or something. They don't. Okay. Um. This is interesting. So they didn't have a play. They passed priority. Okay, so we combo. Got him. Got him. They just flaged out. We are happy with that one. Actually, we're not, but we'll take it. Win there. All right, jumping into one. This is likely energy. We have a couple of the combo pieces. I think we go for it. Soren can buy us some time. Soul Warden. Oscillates, Prides, they're going to go fairly wide on us here. Electric Company is nice. This can help us find a land. Or I could set up for next turn and just go into Collected Company. Because that, like if we whiff on land, it's really bad there. Because then I can't really do much else. And we're only gaining one life in the process. So they get rid of the Innkeeper. I think we try. They didn't show removal yet. They could have static prison, but let's kind of set up our draw. I can Gilded Goose. They did have the static. It will tax them for now. Like they missed a line drop. So we did hit the land. I think we go Soren here. And second bird. So Soren kind of stonewalls them a bit. We have the option to flip Soren. Uh, they're taxed on here. Could just be Galvanic Discharge, my Soren. They did hit land here. The Lurus version, so they don't have Flage. And then this could bait them. Okay, so we see Anthraptor come down. Hopefully just... Okay, so not the end of the world. We get Wild Growth Walker, we win. I can try to go for combo now. Stay here. Stay for the amulet. Land. I mean, their lands have been fairly painful. That taps them out, so we could try to find the combo here. We do have an Amalia in hand. So 
they have a Johnny. They're going to make a lot of tokens here. And step. Are you kidding me? Okay, well, you just whiff that hard. You can't really do much. Ah. Uh... I need to be able to block enough. Oh, that's so frustrating. Keep this Amalia. We just needed even a second creature. Such a low value cord there. I have to decide here with Soren. Another Amped Raptor. So amulet. Galvanic is not enough to kill us. I don't think they have enough in terms of creatures to kill us. We just have to... That's... Six. Block, block. Honestly, don't even need the block like that. If they have bombardment, they kill us anyways. But if they had bombardment, they play it out earlier. Could be wrong. Like if they have bombardment, they beat me with bombardment. Can't beat bombardment. Okay, so they had second a Johnny. And that's going to be enough to kill me. So they just had the second a Johnny. So literally nothing we could have done there. We ended up whiffing just on. They had 14 to get us exactly. Tough one. Again, I'm going to include these losses in. I think. They're important. Like we literally hit anything else. They have hit double static there to kind of get us. It was just a little bit off. Jumping into the game, playing against Orion, fellow Plat 2 gamer. When it goes first, I think we're going to mulligan. And was missing a lot of elements that we needed. Um, I think we do this. So Belcher, a bit annoying. First hand might have actually been better. So we might just lose next turn. They go Magma Opus into the combo. So I'm doing this because we can kill them next turn.
So if we don't die next turn, they die. Unless they have a sweeper, but if they have a sweeper, they get us. No combo? No combo. They just naturally have it turn three? Okay, they're dead. Oh, so they just have packet negation, but they kill us on upkeep. Okay, so they had it. Double pack. So annoying. Like, that's a hand in a hell half. Again, so I'm going to include these games, their losses, but it's important when we're doing this to just see what happens. Like, the opponent needed to have double packed a negation to beat us there. They had the turn two ramp, the belcher, and double pack. Single pack would have bet us, but um, just kind of of that note. So it was a loss, but that's a very good hand out of the opponent to kind of beat us in that respect. So again, wins and losses are one thing in best of one, but you want to kind of assess what happened, right? Turn, we had turn three combo on the play. We'll kind of go from there. All right, jumping in. Sounds a bit weird, because if I do this on one, this on two, we can't really, we're missing like too many pieces. I think it's a mall. We'll try this one out. Put a goose back. A little bit awkward, but try it out. Play out Soren here. We could flip it next turn. Also, just incidental life gain could be good. Panic. They could have second Galvanic that'll kill my Soren, which would be pretty bad. Uh, Primal Prayers combo. We could just be dead here at instant speed. So we may... I think we need to bait out the turn. tricky because like this lets them primal prayers next turn which could win them the game at instant speed i think we do this just buys us a turn oh i messed up i needed to do that pre-combat oh probably dead here i messed that up Mess that up. So they use the um, the two drop alchemy card that just makes conjures a copy of itself as a three one. Yeah, now we're punished. Um, I mean, they're missing at least one back. They don't have white mana right now.
Might have been right still to collect the company. Let's see. We shall see. So they need Bishop of Wood. Or not Bishop. Uh, Guide of Souls. Looks like they might have the combo. Malevent. Fruiter of the Guard. We win here. Guide of Souls comes in. Finds um the one drop or the two drop. Or guide of souls so they could gain infinite life and infinite creatures. I guess the question here is do they have the haste enabler in hand? Because if they don't, they gave me a chance to win. So they can do this. I messed up that Soren turn. That was on me. They dug quite a bit. They had the Jar Souls. We didn't see any of the Haste Enablers in like the top third of their deck. But might be in hand. So this just kind of nets them the energy so they can always consistently cast it at that point. I just want to see if they have the haste enabled because we have a chance to win, which makes it a little bit annoying. I assume they do because if they don't, then they're just taking a net. Like this allows them to do it at instant speed through flash. So they could have actually tapped down all our mana on our upkeep. Like, they have enough to kill us if they had the haste creature. do this I do it on my upkeep I want them to create the creatures because then if I all right we need a life gain and we need a malia Actually, this is such a dumb game. <laughs> I think this matchup's fine. Like, I punted that early turn. They had the well time Galvanic that kind of set us back. Come on. No. Literally the instant win if we had a life gainer. We had so many ways to gain life in the deck. Even if we had one more mana. 
Actually, the one more mana wouldn't have worked because we couldn't extort. Wrap up time. We went one in five. I was zero and uh, two and zero before. This was a weird one. Like every game, there's a just guy control a game that I didn't include in the video that they went turn two Lotus Field, turn three Wrath. That just that game, I didn't feel like it. Every game, we had a chance. Opponent either comboed out, had nice draws. So it's one of those weird ones where the win rate was very low, but I'm not completely off the deck. There was a lot of instances where we could have won. Um, it just didn't play itself out that way. Like this, the last game against Primal Prayers, we needed a life gainer, we win. Uh, against the Boros Energy deck, they happen to have two Ajani's. Otherwise, we win. Uh, the pack deck, or the Belcher deck, had double pack negation uh, with a Belcher on turn three. So it was just like, incidentally, they had the combo ahead of us. Um, so that's one of the things, like I always say, when you assess the deck, look at the overall kind of quality of games, not just the win rate, because things could have gone a lot different in a lot of those games. Like we very much could have been five and one in these those games if things just didn't play out. The first game, like some of those games, like against the decks, like it's just they comboed faster than us. So always kind of keep that in mind. Uh, let me know what you think and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.